Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Elon's Matchup Maximizer podcast presented by Keeping Carlson, a weekly podcast where I, Elon Dubrovsky, walk you through the schedule for the upcoming week of NHL actions so that you can be successful in your head-to-head matchups. You don't want to be grabbing players on teams that are only going to play once or twice for you. know, you got to maximize your chances by getting as many games played from players who hopefully will get you a goal or an assist or something that will help you out. So that's my goal here with this weekly show show and we have got ourselves an interesting week next week you know on on one hand it's kind of like a typical fair right we've got our busy tuesday thursday saturday and our light monday wednesday friday sunday but luckily there's no weird you know like one or two game days like the lightest days i'll have at least five games the busy days you know tuesday and thursday you might even be able to fit someone saturday's super busy so yeah everything's normal i guess the one crazy thing this week that's not too common is one team plays five times but of course we'll have to figure out if that's actually the team you want to stream players from uh but you know what i don't know why i'm talking all secretively because i have nothing to say except to get into this so yeah the team that plays five times is the Detroit Red Wings. They go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Both Monday and Tuesday are against Ottawa and then Seattle, Islanders, and Philly. So uh, aside from obviously playing against Sorokin and the Islanders, you'd think they should be able to score some goals. So it might be interesting to stream in a Detroit player. Though keep in mind, like I said, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are busy. So if you check your rosters, and my advice is always the same every week here, and I'm going to just keep saying it until I'm done doing this show, is you got to, before you stream someone in, you got to check your rosters roster every day set your roster make sure you have all your bench people that are playing you know in your active roster and then actually see what openings you have because if it turns out that you're already full for forwards let's say on tuesday thursday saturday don't pick up a detroit player just to like have him play monday sunday i guess you grab for monday then drop for someone for the rest of the week and consider him back on, on sunday you know, but it's not as exciting as someone who could give you three off day games instead of those two off day games especially if you can get you know a couple right to start the week like anaheim goes monday wednesday friday to start the week you could get those three games then you could swap to a detroit player for the weekend you know get five games which is also which is five games, but like actually five games you could play. You probably wouldn't be able to get the Saturday game, but you know, four games. You know, you know what I'm saying. So obviously you've got to be strategic about this. But let's look at Detroit because obviously there are some people that maybe just have openings, you know, maybe there's not that many bench spots in your league. In that case, obviously get the volume. Or, you know, if you want defense, some people don't have full defense. I actually went and grabbed myself a defenseman from Detroit in the Keeping Carlson Ultra Patriot Fantasy League. I grabbed Ben Sherratt, who is not gonna get you a lot of goals or assists, but he's pretty solid for those peripherals, right? Like he's getting at least like three or two, you know, two at worst, a couple points per game recently just from those nice block numbers and the hits and even some shots. Some who knows, maybe a shot will go in one of these days. He had three shots in the loss to Tampa Bay today. No shot was getting past Andre Vasilevsky today. I'm recording this on Saturday, by the way, February 25th. And yeah, Detroit outshot. Uh, Tampa Bay, but of course they couldn't get anything by Vasilevsky, who is uh, the best goalie in the world. He's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so Sherratt is someone, that, as an example, that if you could fit a defenseman on all five days, that might be better than getting a forward that will only give you three games, right? So uh, yeah, Sherratt is only rostered in 8% of leagues. So yeah, he's someone to look at. You might be able to do a little better, especially if you have room for forwards. I guess today's lines saw Bertuzzi, Perron, and Larkin and then Fabry, Kopp, and Kubalik. So, you know, Lucas Raymond is out. Verana, who knows what's going on with him? Like, I'll throw it out there. Verana could be, like, in theory, interesting. He's a good, he has been a good player in the league. If he plays all five games, he could be interesting, but he got healthy scratch today. Uh, he wasn't getting big minutes in the games he did play. So probably that's not the player I would take. Though if, I don't know, something happens and all of a sudden news comes out that he's going to get on the line with Larkin, then everything changes, right? But I guess, obviously, Tyler Bertuzzi remains at only 24% rostered. I feel like at this point, if you're in a serious league and Detroit is it's head to head and Detroit's playing five times and Tyler Bertuzzi is still available, come on, like just get him. He's on the top line. He's on the top power play. He's on a decent enough streak, like pointless in his last couple games. But before that, he was on a run of points in three straight. So yeah, get yourself Tyler Bertuzzi if you have room for him uh, or if he's available, I should say. And David Perron actually you know, he's rostered in 45% of leagues. I'd probably take Bertuzzi over Perron, but yeah, so grab him. You know, grab someone who has exposure to Larkin. And then if you're looking down the list after that, 
I don't know. It gets tricky. Like Fabry was on a decent run. He's cold now. Uh, maybe if Raymond comes back, then he'll play with him. So I guess like, yeah, Fabry is someone that could be interesting. Uh, he scored, what was it, in like three straight games. And then then he had two assists in the next game. And then now he's gone cold for three games. But who knows? Maybe this is just saying that, you know, he goes in three game stretches. So now he'll maybe uh, go hot for another three games. And that'll be really useful for next week. Michael Rasmussen used to be interesting. Uh, he's injured. So yeah, to summarize, uh, yeah, for Detroit, go for uh, Sherratt. If you want D, he'll probably be available to you. And otherwise, obviously, Bertuzzi is the number one pick. And then I guess take a look at Fabry. I, I should say Andrew Kopp. I don't know. Should I say Andrew Kopp? He's something. He had a goal and two assists a couple games ago against the Rangers. He's pretty hit and miss. Mostly miss. But again, for five games. But I don't know if Detroit's the best team. But I want to throw them out there first since they have five games. But yeah, there is another team that only plays four times. But all on off day games. It's your classic Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And that is the Vegas Golden Knights. So, you know, I think that you might be able to do a lot better than Detroit. If you're in a league like most of mine where I'm already full on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, at least a couple of those days, then yeah, give me a Vegas player who'll give me four guaranteed games of course the question is who on vegas do you want to stream in uh looking at the lines recently there are some names up on big lines right with mark stone out it's been someone named paul cotter who's been playing on the top line with eichel and marcia so and paul cotter's been doing some things you know he's now uh quiet three straight games before that he had a four game point streak he hits a lot so he can help you there if your league counts hits he's shooting an okay amount but at the end of the day if you want someone on Vegas who has a chance to get a point, probably it's either Paul Cotter or maybe you look at William Carrier as another name that you're like, why are you recommending this person? Again, Vegas, four games, all in off day days. We have to take a look at some of these guys that might be available to you. And Carrier is actually hotter than Paul Cotter right now. He's playing on a line with Stevenson and Kessel. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I'd rather have Stevenson. I don't know if I'd rather have Kessel. Uh, but also Carrier has been getting some power play time. And yeah, he, he also uh, hits a little bit. He's been shooting a decent amount. He had some goals recently also, just like Cotter. So I think I feel like it's like a bit of a coin flip with Cotter and Carrier. I added Carrier in the cupful. Now I'm thinking I should have just grabbed Cotter. But too late now probably it's better just get the guy who has the exposure to Eichel and Marsha so maybe I blew that one and then I guess you could also go for like a classic like William Carlson is super cold and he is not on a great line but he's a better name and someone who could like go up the lineup and he has a more, more of a history of getting you points so that could be a safer bet if you just want to go with someone that's not Paul Cotter or William Carrier but those are kind of the big three right now on Vegas that I take a look at I guess we should mention goalies right because Laurent Brossois has been playing now three games in a row for Vegas since Hill got injured, and obviously Logan Thompson is injured. Hill is apparently back soon, but still you'd imagine Brossois, who's been pretty good. Uh, We're actually in the middle of a game right now. So uh, uh, Vegas is currently uh, uh, playing against Dallas, and they're in the second period and still 0-0. So I'm going to count this as like Brossois continuing to play well. Who knows if after I'm finished recording this, he's going to have like 10 goals. But yeah, he could be a really good goalie to grab and get you four games. I doubt you have two goalies playing on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Uh, so maybe he'll get like three of those games. I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, and also on Detroit, Helberg is still out there, right? And he's a pretty good goalie. And I, I in my opinion, <laughs> I, I think so. I think it's nice that he's been getting a chance. If he gets, let's say, the Ottawa game on Tuesday and then the Philly game on Sunday, those are two very winnable games, I think, for Magnus Helberg. So that if you're taking a look at a goalie that you want to stream to get a couple games out of, then he's someone definitely to look at. Okay, so those are the teams with the two best schedules, though actually there's still six teams that have three light day games which is technically better than detroit's two light day games so obviously with detroit if you have an opening on tuesday or thursday then then detroit becomes equivalent uh but yeah there are six teams here that you're going to get a guaranteed three games out of so i'll just go through them one by one uh, let's start with the New Jersey Devils, who just dropped seven on Philly, just totally smacked them around. The Devils are a team that's always fun to stream from because they have some pretty decent players that are low percentage rostered that end up in good spots. Like in today's game, the seven goal game, uh, the top two lines were Hughes with Brat and Sharon Govich, and then he with Tatar and Mercer. And like some of these guys are starting to go up. Like Mercer has been on such a run. Brian and I will definitely talk about him on tomorrow's mega show. But yeah, Dawson Mercer scored again today. This is now his sixth straight game with a goal. And a couple of them had two goals. So he's just like insane right now and he's playing with Heesher and Tatar he's not top power play but like how could you not grab Mercer especially for those three games they are like later in the week it's like Wednesday Friday Sunday those three games 
But I think for someone like Mercer, you go grab him now. Uh, for a Tatar or a Sharon Govich, it's more like maybe you could afford to wait and grab, like get someone else on Monday at least first and then make the drop on Tuesday. You know, maybe someone else will jump on with these guys by Wednesday. But yeah, Tatar is doing okay. He has points in his last couple games. I love him playing with Hughes. And then Sharon Govich doing like less uh, okay. He had only one assist today on the seven goals, but he's in a spot where he's going to have a chance to get points for sure. And then, of course, there's good old Andre Palat, who is rostered in probably too many leagues, 27% rostered for someone playing on the third line, but he's getting top power play. He's on a big, long, cold streak at the moment, so he might be available to you. Maybe he gets a power play point or two. So, you know, nothing, no, nothing to go too crazy about. I would definitely take Mercer first, then Tatar, then Sharon Govich, then Palat. But those would be my New Jersey picks for you. On defense, I get... Well, you know, when players are playing off-day games, it's not so exciting to grab defense because you could just grab their forwards, right? So why even give a name there? For defense, it's like for Detroit, who you're getting, like, the volume. Uh, okay, so next up of teams that have three off-day games, we can go to the Edmonton Oilers, who play Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday, Saturday. So you get four games that probably you're not going to be able to fit in the Saturday game. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, lately, or well, at least in today's game against Columbus, uh, the Oilers ran McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Hyman as the top line. You're not getting any of them. And then kind of, I don't know, that's not too exciting. Like, you know, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is on the top power play, and he's always good. Uh, he's playing online with Fogel and Yamamoto. I don't want to recommend any of these guys. Honestly, like, is it okay if I just don't give a Edmonton recommendation? Like, I just don't see anyone. Like, I'm looking at who got... Okay, Edmonton scored five goals today against the Blue Jackets. They still lost 6-5, but still. Uh, like, who got the points here? Fogel had a goal. McDavid obviously had an insane game. Two goals, two assists. Yeah, of, of guys that might be available, we're looking at Fogel. Like, of all, of, out of five goals, we're literally, like, Fogel's the only guy rostered in less than 50% of leagues of forwards. And Tyson Barry had a couple assists. So, yeah, I guess, yeah, for defense, you get Kulak, uh, who had two assists. And uh, that's it. You're looking at Fogel and Kulak. Like, somehow, Pugliarvi and Yamamoto pointless, as per usual. So, yeah, slim pickings. Probably you're not looking to Edmonton. But I uh, wanted to just uh, mention them because they're one of those six teams that give you those three off-day games. Next up, I can mention the Colorado Avalanche. I mean... Colorado, I've already talked about how they have this great playoff schedule. So a lot of people have been jumping on Avs for a while now. Uh, but now, even for next week, <laughs> if you grab an Av now, they're helping you now. And they're going to be helping you in the future. They play Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. So a pretty good schedule. At least get those Monday, Wednesday. And you could always drop for someone else if it's a lower end guy. Like, let's say if you're going to grab an Alex Newhook, for example. Obviously, you're not going to be holding beyond Wednesday. Uh, if you could get one of the big names, like I think a big name that's very much emerging and someone that if he's still out there i would grab for sure is jt comfer who's playing on a line with rantanen and i almost feel like i should say like need i say more like like that's enough right but he's also on a hot streak uh comfer has uh two straight games with a goal uh going into today's game this is another game that's actually still going colorado's up three nothing against calgary no nothing for comfort yet but yeah you're, you're looking at like six assists and two goals in his last now four games if i include today so comfort's hot he's playing with rantanen you want him for next week, for sure. I grabbed him in one of my leagues. You know, Nichushkin and Lekkonen, those are obvious guys. They're probably not available to you at this point. So yeah, Comfer is probably your best bet. He'll probably be my streamer of the week. <laughs> of everyone I've talked about so far, I can't think of anyone else. You know, Comfer is only rostered in 35% of leagues, which is actually too high. I can't even call him my streamer of the week because that's assuming that he's like more... Like, I don't think that's fair to call someone that when they're probably not even available to you. It's kind of like a tease. So... Yeah, if you want someone like low percent roster, like less than 30%, I mean, Evan Rodriguez has really fallen off, unfortunately, but he is playing on that line with Comfort and Rantanen. So you know what? Make him my streamer of the week. I don't know, I'm a lot less confident in him just because he's been so cold, but he's had little hot runs in the past. Uh, so yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know if he's going to be streamer of the week, but definitely uh, not a bad person to get, at least for Monday, Wednesday, because Colorado is scoring some goals and you want to probably try to get in on that the best you can. Okay, we still have a few more teams to go that have three light day games next week. And then I'll also look at the teams with the worst schedules. And I'll also pick out a couple Sunday saviors for people in close matchups. So I'll be back with the rest of this episode, which I hope you're enjoying in just a sec. You're listening to the Matchup Maximizer. All right, we are back, and I've been going through the six teams that have three off-day games next week. We covered Vegas has four, Detroit only has two, but they do play five times, and then there's six teams that have three of the off-day games, and those are New Jersey, Edmonton, 
Colorado, and then we still have three more. Next up, the Carolina Hurricanes. The Hurricanes are red hot right now. They are looking like they're going to be a real threat, I think, to go far in the playoffs. Uh, and uh, they're, as far as streamers go, it's like not that easy because a lot of their good players are getting snapped up all over the place. Like this top line of Aho, Sveshnikov, and Jarvis has been doing really well lately. Seth Jarvis, if he's still out there for you, 100% pick him up. He is 34% rostered on Yahoo. So maybe you can still get him. And yeah, he's uh, really clicking on that line. He had a three goal game, otherwise known as a hat trick, against the Habs last week. This week he had a couple games with goals. Uh, he's been shooting a lot. I had Jarvis available to me in a few leagues, and I had him even rostered in one of my leagues. And now he's long gone for me. And I wish I had the faith because he is looking like a really good, uh, well, he, he's already like a high end prospect that's really starting to break out. He's getting great deployment. So, like, why not go for a Seth Jarvis at this point? Uh, but yeah, he's not available to me and probably not to you. So then if you look at the next line, uh, you've got Natchez centering Tara Vinen and Kakaniemi. Uh, so yeah, Natchez is not going to be available to you for sure. Tara Vinen probably not. So yeah, I guess we got to look at just Barry Kakaniemi because Carolina plays three times next week, just like New Jersey, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. I wonder if you could wait again, like get a Monday game for someone else and then swap over to Kakaniemi if you want to go for him. Uh, he's like not like that reliable and he's not like been so great but he you know, he scored a goal in his last game he also had a couple goals last week uh and i like the line mates i like playing with nhs and tara Vinen. so if you want to get a carolina streamer uh definitely cockney would be up there he would be up there as far as my streamers of the week uh you know of these names that i've mentioned that might be available to you you know rostered in fewer than say 20 percent of leagues like cockney only rostered in five percent of leagues so i like that he's available at the very least uh is there anyone else in carolina that i could mention for you no, not really. I mean, Brady Shea might be dropped in some leagues because he went on a cold run, and I still like him. He's still been getting a ton of power play time, and I wouldn't be surprised if he you know, heats up again at some point. So maybe now's your chance to go and get Brady Shea while Carolina has a good schedule, and you'll be able to fit in all three of his games. Uh, okay, so next up, the last two teams that have three off-day games are Anaheim and Arizona. Arizona has four games overall, so we can start with them. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And the Coyotes, like we know the two names, are Keller and Schmaltz. Those are the names you want on Arizona. Used to also be Jacob Chikrin, though unfortunately he has not been playing for a long time now. It's very frustrating having him. And it's like, man, I can really use this guy right now. At least he's IR eligible, but still, I mean, I'd rather just be able to have him in my lineup. Uh, Nick Schmaltz, only rostered in 32% of leagues, uh, like better than anyone I've mentioned. Like it's insane. Like at this point, it's just silly. Like, it just this goes to show me that most people on Yahoo aren't in leagues, I guess, that are still active or with people that care about getting points because Schmaltz, you know, has two goals in each of his last couple games. He's hot as per usual. So, yeah, he's obvious. Um, if you can't get one of those two, I guess you could go for their line mate, Barrett Hayton. Hayton's also on the top power play with Keller Schmaltz, Bjorkstedt, and Valamaki as of the last game. Valamaki, not Gosses Bear. What are you doing, Arizona? Isn't the idea that you're supposed to showcase Gosses Bear because he's going to be a UFA at the end of the year? Give him the power play. Why do I have this guy on my team? I don't know. Now, should I drop him? I don't know. Gosses Bear came back from injury. I'm not very happy that he didn't run to the top power play. And now uh, Arizona has a good schedule next week. So I guess I got to hold on at least through Friday. But. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so Valimaki is another name I guess you can look at because he is still getting the top power play, which I wasn't expecting to happen once Gosses Bear came back. He had an assist in his last game. So yeah, Hayton, Valimaki are the names I would go for. And then, you know, you have your typical like Lawson Kraus, if you can get him. He's generally doesn't go quiet for too long. Uh, so yeah, that would be another name. Nick Bjogstad, by the way, also on that top power play. So I guess he's someone, no, he's super cool. He'd be like a very low end option if like there's really nothing else out there for you and you want to get on the Arizona schedule. And then, yeah, the Anaheim Ducks, they are without Adam Henrique, who's gone for a while now. And he was always a pretty decent streamer on Anaheim. So it's too bad to not have him available. But you can still get some options. If we look at their lines recently, Zegris, Strom, and Silverberg was the line today versus Carolina for a win. Uh, John Gibson played really, really well. If uh, Gibson's available for you, maybe go grab him now because he's been doing a little bit better lately. Uh, but yeah, so I guess if we're looking at this line of Zegers, Strom, and Silverberg, Ryan Strom had two assists in this game today. Maybe it's the time to grab him while he's centering Zegers. He's only rostered 5% of leagues. He's had obviously a pretty disappointing season overall. He was drafted in a lot of leagues and since like long dropped. Uh, but he's been getting a point every couple games. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the spot he's in. Uh, of course, 
It also helps that he, Strom is on the top power play with Terry, Zegris, and McTavish. So that would be a pretty good stream, I think. You get Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's when Anaheim plays. Then you drop for the weekend, get two games for someone else or one game for someone else. So I, I, I can't get mad at a Ryan Strom stream. And then there's always Mason McTavish, right? Rostered only in 14% of leagues. He's you know in the same spot. Like He's playing with Troy Terry at even strength and not with Zegris, but he's also on the top power play. So those would be my two picks. And I guess you could look at Jacob Silverberg, who is a name like I for, kind of forgot about. Like We used to talk about him on the podcast podcast all the time and i guess this is what happens when you're like injured for a while like i'm trying to even find silverberg on yahoo here i'm scrolling through ducks based on percent rostered and silverberg the reason why i couldn't find him is he's rostered zero percent of leagues according to yahoo wow that is a fall and he's actually scored in each of his last couple of games so there's a guy that's basically guaranteed to be available to you and he's playing on a line with trevor zegris so okay i'll, I'll take uh silverberg do I take him over Mason McTavish? I think it's close, to be honest, because I'll take the guy playing on the Zegris line. So, uh, you know, there's another deep cut for you, for those of you in super, super deep leagues. And by the way, Cam Fowler is hot again. I hate it, because like anytime I recommend him, he goes uh, cold again. But yeah, I guess I'll, obviously Cam Fowler only rostered in 15% of leagues. He's the top power play quarterback. He's been getting points lately. So I guess, yeah, you got to go with him. So those are the teams with the best schedules of the week. Hopefully I've been able to give you some ideas of players you want to add. On the other side of things, there are three teams that play only twice, the Islanders, the Flyers, and the Capitals. The Islanders definitely have the worst schedule because those are both on busy days, Tuesday, Saturday. So if you've been holding on to like a Kyle Paul Mary or something like that, now is definitely time to let him go. Honestly, like if you're in an important week and you need to win, the only Islanders I'm holding are, I guess, like Bo, Bo Horvat, Anders Lee, Brock Nelson, and, you know, Noah Dobson. That might be it. Sorokin, I guess. Yeah, those are going to be the names of the players you want. Palmieri's on the top power play, but I don't know, for two-game week, uh, I don't think it's worth holding him just for that. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess like there's a bunch of teams, though, that play only Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So you might not get any games from them. So again, you got to check and see. You know, you got to set your lineups. Not only just press the button, but actually go through and like put in the players that would like you would actually play and then see who's on your bench. And if you have someone like, you know, Pittsburgh plays three times, if you're going to have Jason Zucker on your bench in all three of those days, like that's a guy who's giving you zero games next week. And you could drop him for someone like Carrier or Cotter on Vegas to get four games. So even though you may like Zucker better than one of those Vegas guys, you know, like what are you going to do? Take four games or take zero and take a loss. So that's the obvious strategy. That's, that's the whole point of this podcast, right? So definitely take a look and uh, make a smart decision because you're heading towards your fantasy playoffs. You don't want to lose because you didn't do some matchup maximizing. All right, so let's finish off with the Sunday Savior. Let's look to tomorrow's games. So that will be Sunday, February 26th. And there's the Capitals versus the Sabres, the Blue Jackets versus Minnesota, the Islanders uh, versus Winnipeg, LA versus the Rangers, Tampa Bay versus Pittsburgh, Nashville versus Arizona, Toronto versus Seattle. So honest, honestly, you don't need me. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of players available to you. That's enough games, I think, for you to be able to look at the available free agents and make a pick for yourself. But I'll throw a couple out there. Tommy Novak has been looking pretty good on Nashville lately. They play the Coyotes, so that's potentially a chance to get some goals. Novak's on a four-game point streak. Uh, Nashville just lost you know, Niederreiter to a trade, so maybe he gets an increased role. So he's someone that I'd look at. You know, I'm, I'm going to just be mentioning guys that I think are not available in very many leagues at all, since otherwise I think you'll probably be able to figure it out. Uh, Matt Martin on the Islanders is somehow on a bit of a run. He has points in four straight games. I'm talking about Matt Martin, who's generally someone you only roster for his hits. But if he's out there for you now, he's been playing on a line with Lee and Horvat. So he's in a good spot. He'll give you those hits and he's on a hot streak. So yeah, Matt Martin's maybe someone that you can go and give a try versus the Winnipeg Jets today. So those are a couple names. I, I'm not going to go too deep into the Sunday saviors, but I'd be curious to know. Tweet at me at uh, Keeping Carlson and let, let us know who you ended up picking for your Sunday saviors. Who did you stream just for today to try to get that win in your very important matchup for this week before switching over to focus for next week? So yeah, hope everyone got something out of this show. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. As always, I'm very open to feedback, either on the Keeping Carlson Discord server, where our community of patrons are 
great, really fun. We, we, we chat a lot about all these different strategies and try to help each other out. And yeah, we have a Matchup Maximizer channel in there where I'd love to hear if anyone like took any of this advice that I gave. Or maybe you just listen to the show not to specifically take the advice, but just to you know get a sense of the schedule. I think that's when I used to listen to shows like this, that's generally my main reason for listening. Then I like to do my own research here. Uh, but it's nice to just get a sense of like what teams are playing a lot, which teams are not. But yeah, hope you liked it. Uh, I'll be back with another episode of the Mega Show, the Keeping Carlson Mega Show, just in less than 24 hours. Me and Brian will get behind the mic to break down a ton of stuff from this past week in fantasy hockey. Uh, so to get this and that and everything else right to your phone, including Short Shifts episodes, which are coming out twice a week, just make sure you're subscribed to Keeping Carlson on your podcast device. That helps us out also that you download all of the episodes and it gets all of our content right into your ears. So with that, I will bid you all a Adieu. Good luck next week. Hopefully you successfully maximize those matchups, get the wins, get into the playoffs, take home a championship. See you, everybody.